I want to bear my heart with you on this program and talk with you about how you can become successful, how you can become great. There is a proverb that says, a man's gifts will bring him before kings and princes and he will not stand before insignificant men. And I'm, I'm gonna come that, at this from several different angles, but the most important one, the most important angle is what's here inside of us. You know that I spend an enormous amount of time on this program discussing politics, leadership, fighting evil, all of these things. That's a part of who I am as a man. And I believe that it's a part of what God wants of the body of Christ, that we be leaders in the culture, that we be the head and not the tail, that we attack the gates of hell and the gates of hell will not prevail. God told Abraham, your seed will possess the gates of their enemies. So we are the seed of Abraham, those who believe in Christ. So I, I'm giving you this framework. I believe in us having a position of leadership the issue is, what's going on here? Jesus said, if someone wants to be great among you, let him be the servant of all. If somebody wants to be the greatest, let him be the slave of all. He said, look at the Gentiles, how they rule. You know, their great ones exercise dominion over them. Power, power, power. So, in America, we have people that are clamoring to get to the top, ah, fighting, 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 stomping on people, clutching at someone above them. And there's another ladder over here that very few people travel on, the ladder of service. We in America call our elected officials public servants or people that are on the government payroll as public servants. They serve the public. I know that that has become largely a misnomer because there's so few of them that actually have a servant's heart. Just go to many of our Department of Motor Vehicles, for example, and see what I'm talking about. But um, there are some good people there. But, but I think most of us have had an experience with a bureaucrat who is a public not servant. Anyway, think in your life of the people who have helped you the most. The people who were there for you in a moment of crisis. When we had to move because our son is fighting cancer, we came to a foreign city. We knew no one, literally no one. And we had a couple of guys from a church who furnished our entire house that we rented. When we came here, we brought clothing, school books, instruments in our pickup truck and a little trailer behind. No furniture, no silverware, no dish, nothing. And these men, who did not know us, served us. They were the greatest for us. They served us. They had a servant's heart. They weren't looking for anything out of it. So here are some ways that you can test your own heart. You ready? How do you treat the elderly? How do we treat the elderly? Now, when I say elderly, I mean go right to someone in a hospital bed or bed bound in their own home, right on death's door, old age, and work backwards. Do we give them a sip of water? Do we hold their hand or stroke their forehead? Do we read to them? Do we ask, can I go get you something? Do we ask their caregiver, is there anything you need from the store? Or would you like a little break? Would you like to just go somewhere for an hour or two? Just clear your mind. In other words, the reason I'm using this as an illustration is because normally in a setting like that, there's nothing that this person can do for us. There's nothing that they can do in return. And so the overarching question is, how do we treat people who don't have something that we need or want? We're just doing it for the sake and the love of Christ. So you look at the elderly, you look at children, you look at the handicapped, and then say, how do I serve them?
do I serve them? 